We're about to power this dome 100% off of our solar array. I think I can finish this, I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't move at all. All right, y'all, let's hit the switch and see what happens. How's it going everyone? You're watching the Green Dream Project. Jim here. My wife and I, we're building our own earth bag home off grid here in the Arizona desert. And we're about to power this dome 100% off of our solar array. But there is so much to do. Let's get this done. Let's do it. I think I got the plan pretty much situated. Wiring this dome is gonna be fairly simple and it should give me some good practice for the next dome, which I think will be much more complicated. But this one, pretty easy. So I already worked out a plan. I'm gonna head in here right now and start making a materials list of all the things I need to get. I'm gonna get those materials and then I'm gonna start crack-a-lacking. Time to get some electricity in this dome. Then once we got the wiring all done, then we can start covering up those bags on the inside and we'll be moving right along. This is where I place one of the cleats and this is where I'll be attaching the electrical box for this first dome here. I have a conduit right underneath so I'm gonna be taking some measurements and this is kind of where all the electrical will branch out from. So I already got sort of a plan worked out for how I'm gonna do the wiring, but I need to take some measurements. I need to find out exactly how much wire I might need. I need to make a list of exactly how many outlets and stuff like that I need. Later, maybe tomorrow, I'll head out, get some supplies, and then it's all hooking things up from there. This will be the first time I'm kind of wiring something of this magnitude, so. Wish me luck. You can probably barely see it. It's so mud covered, but this is uh, one of the cleats here. We'll have an electrical box over here. And then I have to run wiring for lighting up along this way. Let's get some more measurements. So I got another outlet right here and the wiring will eventually go up to the loft. For our underground bedroom, I have an outlet planned for over here, one over here, kind of both sides of where the bed will be. Got a light switch over here by the stairs. I'll also be putting a light right up here. Now for the dome portion, got an outlet planned over here, one over here, a little closer to our door, one over here between our door and our south window. I'll have a switch over here for our loft, a switch over here for the ground floor. Thinking about lighting ceiling fan combo here. Now let me take you to the loft. I still got some of these boards in the wall over here. These are actually the other ends of some of those boards that stick out from the outside of the dome and it'll be a perfect place to attach a, a box to put an outlet in. And I'll also be putting lighting up here. So we're back with the supplies. Unfortunately, I couldn't get everything I wanted at the Home Depot, but let me show you what I did get. Got 250 feet of 12-2 wire. We got some outlets, got some switches, got a multimeter, got some crimping sleeves, wire connectors. Now I was able to score a few 20 amp breakers. That's awesome. Then I got a whole bunch of these boxes. Let's get to wiring y'all. Of course, we'll also need this. First off, let's do a little unboxing. I picked this up a while ago, maybe uh, months ago, in anticipation for doing the electrical. I need to cut a board approximately the right size so I can attach it to the wall, so I can attach this to that. Now I just gotta cut this up, mount it, and mount the panel. Time to mount the board. Now had I thought more about it, maybe I should have put another cleat down lower and attached the board both at the top and the bottom, but this should do. One more for good measure. That ain't going nowhere. Got the perfect hardware. I'll bring out my level here and then get some more screws in. All set, y'all. Now that I got the box mounted, I am going to start mounting all of the gang boxes. I had to bring Jess out here just to kind of make sure the way I got things set up is gonna be okay with her. Now she's gonna have to use the light switches and outlets as well, so. I think we got the okay, so now I'm gonna start putting things together. As much research as you can do, it's still like nerve wracking coming in here and actually doing the work. It took a while for me to really kind of get going because I was just so hesitant, so nervous about just even starting it. Yeah, well, this is your first time wiring a house. I mean, like I said, I had a little bit of practice just running one bit of wire to plug the trailer into, but this is a whole nother level. Now that I'm down in the underground bedroom, I want to put up a few of these gang boxes down here. Should take me a couple minutes and we'll move right along. So I got all the gang boxes placed, or most of them uh, for the 
some of the outlets and the switches. Still got to get up to the loft and I'll put a couple up there. He works hard for his money. He works hard for his honey. Uh, uh, uh. He works hard for his honey, so you better treat him right. Of course, you get up here, you think you got everything. But you're always missing something. I should get a pencil. I should have brought a pencil. Picked these up from the local hardware store, but uh, I'm not too crazy about it. More expensive than the big box store and uh, not quite as adaptable. I think that's it for all the outlets and the switches. Now I need to put up some stuff for the lights. Got a little box here for the ceiling fan. It's a cool thing we still have this post here. Ugh. Got a little dust in my eye. This will make a really nice base for the fan. Oh, that's tough. Nice. All right, put this cover plate back on. I'm putting a ceiling fan support box in here. I don't know if I'll actually be putting a ceiling fan in here, but wouldn't hurt just to have it just in case. So with that in, we got everything in place. Uh, all the stuff for the outlets, the switch, and the lighting. I think everything is good on the ground floor, and I might want to add one more receptacle like this up into the loft, but otherwise everything is good to go. I think I'm going to start stringing the wire around now. Unfortunately, I still don't have a lot of the things I need out here. I don't have any of the conduit I need. I still need some 50 amp breakers. I'll just kind of start with what I can. Put these in place, uh, start doing some of the knockouts, and uh, maybe start stringing the wire around. I got a much larger box than I need in case I want to expand it all. We have that option. I'm gonna start knocking out some of these knockouts and getting things ready. Well, it seems kind of crazy to me that there should be like 250 feet of wire inside this little package, but I'll take their word for it. But according to my calculations, it should be more than enough to wire everything up in here. And my calculations have been known to be right sometimes. Yeah, this part's got me the most nervous for some reason. But I know I'm going to leave plenty of excess. Make sure I got room and where everything needs to go, so. Uh, I think I might have a little bit of solution for running these wires around these bags. Maybe there are better solutions, but this seems to be okay for right now. Just gonna hold these bad boys together with a little bit of tape. I think I might be cutting this a bit long, but I'd rather give myself a little extra wire than not enough. I feel like that's a fair amount of wire to hang out there. Yeah, that should work. I had an idea for how to hold some of these cables in. Since I'm building with dirt, <laughs> why not use landscaping pins? This looks like it might be a really good idea. I'm really close, I'm really close. I'm feeling a lot more confident with stringing this wire and uh, I'm eager to, to get this situated. So let's keep going. I got one outlet here and then it's going up to the loft and I'm gonna string in that last outlet. So just two more outlets right here. Now for my last trick, I'm gonna go up there and then actually work in reverse order, work from that outlet down to here. Then we should be done. It gets very close to this joist, so I'm gonna try and drill as close to this joist as possible. And I'm gonna bring it out a little bit. That way I'm not drilling into any bags up above. Uh-oh, crew dog. Is crew gonna help with the electric? <laughs> How's it looking, Jess? Uh, looking good. How's it feel with all the wiring going on? I think it's exciting. We're getting to that next step? Yeah. Of course, uh, I gotta dig like a 70 foot trench two feet deep before we can actually get power into this thing. Oh. <laughs> Look how close I got the uh, hole to this cab. Man. <laughs> I shaved some of that cob off in order to get that hole in there. That's crazy. That's perfect though. That's exactly where you want it to be. This is the end of the line right here. It's getting quite a bit of airflow through here. It's kind of nice. Okay, so first I'm going to feed this down. 
through here. Oh, ho, ho, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's perfect. I could see it being kind of stuffy up here, but uh, honestly, the, uh, the pipes help. It really helps with the ventilation. I can really tell a difference between the bags we did up here and the bags we did down below. I really learned a lot doing this dome. And one of those things is making sure you use enough water. I don't think we used enough water on some of those lower portions and some of these edges get kind of crumbly. But uh, I think I really fixed that and these seem a lot more compact around the edges. And it makes for stringing this wire a lot easier. I'm gonna try and hide it as much as possible. Duck it in to uh, as many of these crevices as I can. That way it's a little bit more out of the way. And when we go over this, it should be easier to cover the wire. I think this is one of Jess's grandfather's old wired cutters. It's appropriate now that we're kind of using it for this build. It's probably got a lot of history and then uh, now we're just adding to it. I got my first string all done. Two more to go before I'm finished. I didn't have one of these conduit clamps before, but I got them now. So I'm gonna try putting this in and utilizing that. I'm gonna get this other wire situated with the clamp too. That way it's not just held up by the duct tape. Now that the second wire is in place, we'll start stringing this along. This will be for the lights. All right, making real good progress here. Just got to keep it going. Bring them into the work zone. Huh? Hey. Want to be right there? <laughs> Wants to be in the most inconvenient <laughs> spot. He's, he's eager to help. He wants to get in on the action. Oh, I got it. All right. <laughs> Making some serious progress, y'all. Serious progress. That last one went pretty quick. I'm hoping this one does too. So as you can see, I got one line coming in. I'll have two coming out. And this will have two switches. One for the uh, ground floor, and the other switch will be for the loft. This particular wire will be going all the way up to the top of the dome. <laughs> all right, let's head up to the top. I feel like, I mean, every time we do something to the house, obviously it gets a little closer to becoming like a home. <laughs> but I think this is a big step. Yeah. Getting electricity and turning this into more of a modern house. It wouldn't have been too bad if um, kind of went Amish with it, but <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it'd be nice having some lights and stuff like that to be able to work in there. Yep. Okay, I'm just gonna leave this one hang for right now until I get a box up here, but this one is just about ready to go. I'm really happy with the way this is going. I gotta put that box up, but that shouldn't take too long, but uh, right now, time to head to the underground portion. I'm thinking I'm gonna come down straight down here and come into this board. I'm just gonna check underground real quick and see if that's where I want it. I think it makes the most sense. That's the most convenient coming out of the box. And then it'll come out right here. I'll start drilling through the joists. And then I'll come straight down here, right to the first box. The problem I can already see though, is there's a ton of cob right up there. So I'm gonna have to knock away some of that cob. All right, well, let me give that a shot. You know, looking from up here, it might not be too bad. I'm gonna cut some of this wire first. Now all that's left is the underground work. All right, almost done, but I'm getting down to the nitty gritty on the wire. So we'll just start drilling through these joists. We'll take the wire all the way down to the end. It's getting late, I'm past my bedtime. I'm gonna have to uh, finish the last of this tomorrow in the morning. Then I'll bring Jess out here and uh, we'll get her reaction to all this. 4.30 in the morning and I'm back up here stringing wire doing uh, the wiring in an earth bag house is quite a bit different than like your standard mm -hmm. conventional home wiring because the walls are very different. 
Yeah, obviously it presented some challenges. I was gonna use duct tape all around here, but finding those landscape pins, that really was a key to just kind of holding this wire in place. It won't fully come to fruition until we like start working on the walls and then all this wiring will kind of be buried inside the earth. Right. So like with a timber frame kind of house, so all the wiring gets tucked into the walls and that, you know, gets covered. And this is kind of the same thing. All the wires are going to get covered eventually, but we needed to do the wiring before we could finish the inside walls. I should hold it. Now, one last thing to go just for this light. So this is the last little bit of wiring. I get nervous uh, at every stage through here, but I think this will be one of the most fun. So we're just coming up from this box here, going through those joists, and then back over to the light. And I think that's about all she wrote for this internal wiring. We're all done down here. Let's head back up. So out of 250 feet of wire, this is all I have left. I thought I would have maybe anywhere from 50 to 80 feet approximately of wire left. This is what I have left. Let's find out exactly how much this is. So from post to post, we're approximately 10 feet. So when it's all said and done, I probably have a little over 20 feet left. So this is definitely a lesson for me, and it might be a lesson for you. Always overshoot what you think you need. I thought I'd have, well I did have more than enough, but not as much as I thought. So I ended up using quite a bit. I mean I probably used like 30 to 40 feet more than I thought. I don't even know where that all went. You know, maybe just the slack in some certain areas or, you know, giving it a little extra room towards the end. Maybe it all, probably all adds up. I got just about everything wired up and it's looking great. But now, one of the most difficult, arduous tasks lays ahead. Let me show you what's going on. So this right here houses all of our electrical equipment. We got our panels back over here. But over here, that's the guts of the system. This right here is where I need to go to get power to our house. One of the things I need to do is I need to kind of clean up this box a little bit. There's a circuit breaker in here we don't need. I can't do it right now because you could hear the, the inverters working. We got the AC going in the uh, trailer for crew. But maybe tomorrow morning, I need to shut all this down and I'm going to take one of these 30 amp breakers out there because we're not using it. Pull out some of the wires just to kind of clean up the box a little bit. And just get this panel ready to go. And I can use one of these 30 amp breakers for the dome. That's not the hard part. The hard part is this. I got about 60 to 70 feet of trench I got to dig to get conduit from the shed all the way over to the house. So I can run those wires in there and get the power in there. So that is going to be a lot of digging a lot of trenching, and I gotta do all this by hand. I'm wondering how quickly I can get this done. I'm not looking forward to it, but it's gotta get done. And when it does, it'll be very exciting. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is mark out a little path going from the shed over to the house. I wish I could say it's gonna be a straight line, but unfortunately it's not. With the cistern walls, those got larger than we intended. So it's gonna curve out a little bit, but it shouldn't be too bad. And I'm gonna mark out this path with my trusty Matic. It's been far too long since we worked together. Me and her, we've gone through some times together. And we're gonna be working together again. You ready, baby? Let's get at it. I'm gonna do what GDP does best, and that's digging, y'all. So I carved out my path, and already I'm tired. Some of these parts are gonna be challenging, for sure. The path I carved isn't the straightest path. It's gonna have some bends, but I'll have to straighten it out a little bit more. But pretty much I got it marked out. Now it'll be time to do the dirty deed and get this thing about a couple feet deep. Yeah, I know, that's a long way to go. I wonder how quickly I can do it. I'm gonna try and do a little work tonight, and just keep hacking away at it, little by little. Crew, you gonna help do some digging? You gonna help do some digging? All 
All right, you can see what crew's showing you. I'm digging out quite a bit. Uh, and mostly it's just with the pickaxe. This ground is very tough to get through. And I need that, I need that in order to break the ground. But the kind of cool thing is, is that when I break the ground, it usually comes off in big chunks. So I can just kind of toss out the chunks and uh, I'm actually getting like a foot down with uh, just a couple of swings of the, uh, the pickaxe or the mattock. I guess it's maybe a mattock. I still got my work cut out for me, but I'm off to a great start. Crew, you gonna help dig? You gonna help dig, buddy? Now he's ignoring me. All right, y'all, I'm making some really good progress out here. Of course, I'd like to be done, but I'm not. I'm about halfway there, but I really gotta take this area careful. I mean, you see the pipe over here? I've got this pipe running underground. You know, I don't wanna swing the mattock and just uh, crack that pipe or anything like that. So I just gotta take it easy, kind of dig around here a little bit. Just make sure I don't bust anything. I mean, monsoons are right around the corner. I don't want to have to go fixing this up too. So yeah, just uh, kind of take my time and work my way around here. All right, awesome. Now that I know exactly where the pipe is, I'll just kind of clear the dirt around here and I can keep on moving on. At least I know I'm not gonna like crack it or nothing like that. So I got the trench kind of dug from one end to the other. It's fully dug, but yeah, you know, it's for sure got to get deepened. There's definitely a little bit more of a wave to this trench than I would care for. So I'm gonna have to straighten that out a little bit. And then uh, once I do that, then it's just all about getting it to the depth I need. Now I've been able to dig most of this trench by hand with just a shovel and a mattock. I mean, the trench is all like dug out for sure, but it just areas need to get deeper. The big problem is when the trench gets closer to the house and when it gets closer to the shed. When I get over here, it's tough even for the mattock to really kind of get into the ground and loosen up the soil. It's just picking at it little by little. It's, it would take forever to hack through some of this soil. So I pulled out a tool that we've had for a long time and I'm gonna see if this does the trick. But I haven't used it in a while, so let's see if it's still up to the job. It's a little dusty, but it looks to be in good shape. You know, a while ago we were sent this spade bit by a viewer. Now I finally get to use it. I can't wait to see how this does. Now we're playing with power. I think this will work. You done for the day? <laughs> I'm done for the day. And I've been digging that trench for a few days now and my back is to let me know it is not happy. So now we got a lot of comments, questions, concerns. I wanna address a few of those right here. Cause what we're doing here is a little bit different from a conventional build. Obviously you could see here, I'm just kind of running the wire along the bags. I did use some duct tape over here and I kind of stopped using that toward the beginning. I went to these uh, staples, which worked a lot better. But uh, there's a couple reasons why we, we're not using conduit over here. And one of them is just conduit would be crazy expensive right now. I don't even know how much that would add extra onto this build. But if it gave us a decent amount of protection, I mean, I'd invest in that. But one of the really big problems about trying to put conduit inside of here is that we really wouldn't be able to affix the conduit to the wall in any particular fashion. But a lot of people have been bringing up, uh, how are you gonna get access to the wires? It really give you access to the wires if something went wrong. I think it'll be cheaper. I think it'll be almost as well protected and much more access if something does go wrong. This trench excavation has gone on much longer than anticipated. All this is probably 18 inches deep. Some of it's actually going a little deeper, but I'm getting close to the shed. But this pipe that I put in the ground here is kind of getting in my way. We don't need it anymore. So I'm probably just maybe gonna cut it. That way it'll make it a little easier to dig underneath. I put this pipe down there a little while ago as a way to get extra water into our poly tanks. But uh, now I think when we collect water off the shed, I'll just do it in an IBC tote. And any water from our main roof, we'll just put it into the poly tanks for the foreseeable future. All right, so I'm gonna cut this up, get this out of my way. And I'm thinking it still has water in there, so. Uh, maybe if I cut this up, release the water, maybe it'll help with the dig. 
Awesome. Now I'll let that kind of soak in for a few minutes and then uh, I should be able to just kind of dig right on through here. Another observation people made is running these wires diagonally like that. In a house, you probably wouldn't want to run wires diagonally. It's going to make the wires a lot more difficult to trace if it's too difficult to uh, kind of figure out where it is. When you're putting in nails or screws or something like that, uh, you can hit the wiring. And I wasn't crazy about it either, but I wanted to make it as short of a run as possible and use less wire. That's not really going to be a concern anyway because we cannot put screws and nails anywhere we want to in this. If you're going to put screws and nails or fasteners into an earth bag dome, that's got to be pre-planned ahead of time and you have to have cleats or stuff like that to be able to put that in there. If we want to hang something, we better have had that plan in place before we even built this thing. <laughs> so that's not really a concern either. One positive aspect about doing a YouTube channel is we have hours of footage. So we'll know exactly where the wiring is at all times. <laughs> we can go back to there anytime. It's always a surprise what you might find in the ground while digging. Look, it's a little desert toad. Hey there. He's up a little early. The monsoon rains aren't scheduled for a little while yet. <laughs> he wants to go back into his little hidey hole. Oh, is he trying to go? Oh, it's trying to go back in. Oh, it's going in. <laughs> oh. It disappeared. It went deeper. Wait, it's coming out. Oh, you can see it. Look at its eye popped out. It's like, what's going on? What's going on up here? What are you doing? I'll oh, see now he's gonna eat the toad. Oh, don't eat it. He's like, what are you guys? <laughs> what are you guys looking at down here? You can't. Uh, he only gets excited when they start moving around. <laughs> just being nosy. He's just being nosy. He's being nosy. And another comment people have made is uh, the position of the box being upstairs. I think some people mentioned about it being kind of down below in the basement. And I thought about that too. Thing is, it would require more 90s to get it down there. And there's always the concern about... I don't think it'll ever happen, but what if water does get down there? There's that question. There's extra precautions you got to take for that. So I think this placement, one, it makes the wire run shorter, makes it a little simpler as far as all the 90s are concerned. It'll be a little bit more protected up here and a little easier to get to if, you know, something does happen with the breakers. Another thing I wanted to bring up was a lot of people were concerned, hey, if the wiring goes wrong, there could end up being a fire and the house could burn down. The one cool thing about this house is that it is not flammable. The wiring could kind of flame up. Uh, there are some wood things in there, but the general house itself is going to be fine. I'm not saying I want there to be fire, a fire in there, <laughs> but if there is some kind of fire, it's gonna be safe. This is a non-conventional house and we're gonna be doing non-conventional things in here. The wiring is not gonna be conventional. But yes, there are gonna be some things, of course, that we need to adhere to because we don't want wiring burning up in there. And I believe everything we're doing is going to be well. The wiring will work, the wiring will be safe. So no issues with that. All right, y'all, I'm about done with this. I've been working on this trench for days. But I got like maybe seven feet left here of trench to kind of just dig a little deeper and uh, I'm good to go. I'll be honest, I'm still kind of feeling it in my back, so. The uh, Maddox swings are just going to be a little, uh, little shorter, a little less violent. And I just got to chip away at it slowly because I'm in a little bit of pain. My back has been killing me though. Sometimes when I wake up, usually I feel pretty, pretty good. My muscles are relaxed and ready to go. Today I woke up sore. My back is hurting and it's tough going out there. But I only have like a little bit left. It's, it's ridiculous. It's redonkulous. So close, I got maybe four or five feet left to go. I've done quite a bit of trenching out here. Uh, the last trench I did was the trench for our septic. I dug that out by hand and with the uh, demolition hammer. Before that was the uh, electrical line. I think that might have been about 50 feet. So this is uh, about 70 feet. That's been rough. So of course I use the mattock a lot with a uh, dig like this. And I usually use a full force swing. It comes up and over my shoulder like that. 
but I've been having to kind of do uh, smaller swings like this. Still kind of rough on the back, but not quite as bad. I think I can finish this. I'm not sure, but it's going to be pretty slow going. Jeez. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's, it's hurting already from just those few swings. Do you want some tiger mom? <laughs> I can't move at all. But man, it is sore. I don't think I've ever been this sore for a while. Now we were talking about before about uh, kind of staying in shape and how we kind of needed to keep up our physical abilities. And even though Jess and I have both been exercising a bit more lately, man, my body was not ready for this, clearly. Well, the, uh, the Tiger Bomb definitely helped the back. It definitely feels a lot better than it did before. Is it perfect? No. It still hurts a bit. But I decided to get back out here and I gotta finish what I started. Well, this is it, y'all. Just a couple more swings of the Matic and this trench is done. Tanya, it was painful, but that Tiger Bomb helped me see it through. All right, y'all, man, that trench is done. This is kind of really one of the reasons I wanted to kind of go into that health kick of like eating better and kind of working out is this very thing. Uh, I really wanted to sort of watch my nutrition, make sure I was getting, uh, losing a bunch of weight, make sure I was uh, feeling better health-wise. Uh, I wanted to kind of get back into building up that muscle and just becoming more limber because exactly activities like this my back wasn't used to that kind of work again and so my muscles were just wanted to tighten up so much but i think a combination of the tiger bomb and the cbd oil was a really good one two punch for uh, helping out with the back help me finish off the trench Today is the day I get to go inside there and start hooking up some receptacles, start getting everything wired up and getting ready. Today I'm expecting a delivery of more six gauge wire. And when I get that, then I can run wire from the shed over to the house and, uh, and we can hook everything up. Pretty soon, we might have power inside the earth bag dome and I'm crazy excited about it. All right, y'all, so I'm in the dome, about to get to work. I'm gonna grab myself a bag of goodies and I'm gonna work from the bottom up to the top. I'm excited. I'm excited about getting these receptacles on and uh, maybe soon powering up the dome. All right, let's go down to the basement. All right, y'all, down in the bedroom. Got my tool pouch, got my bag of goodies, and then I'm gonna wire up the, uh, the bedroom here. It's just two receptacles and a light switch. So this is my first receptacle, so I'm kind of excited about that. First receptacle is wired up and ready to go. I just got one more receptacle, one more light switch, and the bedroom is done. All right, so I got my first ever switch wired up. I put this crimper sleeve on the grounding wire. I think I'm supposed to do that for the others. I'm gonna go back, add the crimping sleeve to those uh, grounding wires. But otherwise, I'm pretty much done down here. First room done. All right, so now I'm in the dome. So I'm gonna do the ground floor, and then I'll head up and do the loft. All right, we got another one wired up. I honestly think this is my best looking one yet. Although while I'm in the midst of uh, wiring the second receptacle over here, uh, I have a visitor. Crew, came to hang out with daddy? Crew says he's been hanging around with uh, Jess way too long. He wants some guy time, so he's hanging out here. Right crew, you want some guy time? Guy time! Maybe he just wants to hang out here because it's cooler here than it is in the trailer. <laughs> I don't know. All right, y'all. This is the last receptacle down here. Then it's the switches, but I might go up top and wire that last receptacle, then deal with the switches down here. I feel like I'm getting more and more adept at doing this. By the time I'm done, I'll have some new skills. All right, looking good. All right, another outlet installed. Problem is, got ahead of myself a little bit. I got a little too excited. I want to install one of these GFCI outlets downstairs. So back down to the bedroom, to the very one I started at. Gonna take this out, put this GFCI one in, and then I'm gonna take this one, put that up to the loft. It sucks that I gotta kind of take that out and redo it, but that's just the way it is. I got ahead of myself. But I'll get these switched out real quick. Shouldn't take me too long. Get that last outlet in and then I should be good. Then it's on to the last two switches. All right. <laughs> A little struggle, but we got it in. All right. 
Now I take this up to the loft. So I'm in the loft. Well, this is the end of the line for the outlets. They go all the way around downstairs and then it ends up here. All right, last one in. Easiest one because it's the end of the line. So I just had the one hot, the one neutral, and the one ground. So phew, all set, y'all. All right, y'all, for my last trick, basically I got one power source coming into this box here and I wanna wire up two switches. This is my most complicated wiring thing yet. I guess this is a very common way to do this, but uh, my first time. So it should be interesting. Basically, I'm gonna have to make some pigtails, split the power source in between the switches, and well, you'll see. So these wires are definitely longer than I need. So what I'm gonna actually do is kind of, I'm gonna cut these, and I'll use these as part of my pigtails. So you see, I just combined all these neutrals. I won't need those. Tied them all together, put a little wire nut on there. This can go back in there. Okay, I got all my ground wires hooked together with a couple of pigtails. See, so then I got my hot wire coming in from the panel. Got that tied together with a couple of pigtails with the wire nut. So now that's split into two. Last switch, gonna hook this up and then uh, I'll be done with all the outlets and switches and everything like that. Then it's just getting power from the shed over to the dome and we should be all good. So the switches are all hooked up, wires are all tucked in. Eventually this will actually do something. Very cool, y'all. So Jess, tell me what you think about uh, now that we got all the uh, outlets in place. Very cool. We're getting closer to getting some power in here. Y'all, some of our viewers contacted us and they offered us some wire. They uh, wanted to donate some wire to the build. We got maybe 60 odd feet here of uh, 6 gauge wire. We also got a couple rolls of 14 gauge wire and a roll of the 12 gauge that I've been using. So that is absolutely fantastic. Jess and I are beside ourselves. It's incredible when uh, people reach out to us like that. It was great getting to meet some of our viewers. We had an excellent time talking to them. So generous of them to, uh, to donate to our build here. We'll definitely put this stuff to use, so thank you so much. I'm gonna put some plates on all the switches and outlets, kind of protect a little bit, then to get ready for some major electrical stuff. So I'm over here at the breaker box. I'm just gonna do a little rearranging before getting to the nitty gritty stuff. I got a 50 amp breaker that I'm gonna install and there's a 30 amp breaker that I'm gonna take out. We're not using it anymore. And I'm gonna clean up some of these wires. I'm gonna shut off both the breaker inside the panel. And I'm also gonna shut off the breakers right before the panel. So that should cut off all electricity flow to the panel, but I'll give it a test first. I'm gonna remove this cable when I get the opportunity. And maybe we can use that wire for something else. I'm just gonna give this a quick wipe down. You ready to fire this thing up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I am, okay. Well, uh, we'll turn these on and then we'll turn that back on. And hopefully everything's good. All right, we're still good. <laughs> and the panel's a little cleaner. Perfect for adding more stuff in. All right, y'all, back at it again. So a slight interruption for having gotten the wrong face plates here. Got the right ones. The ones for the switches are looking good. I'm gonna get these attached to these outlets and we should be moving right along. Looking nice. All right, with this last one here downstairs, we got all the cover plates on, looking real nice. Time to start running this wire from the shed over to the house and get things hooked up. I've got a bunch of my conduit over here. I probably won't need all of this. Might end up returning some of it. Some of this was purchased with the intent of going to the other dome. Now we're just going straight from the shed to the dome and then from the west dome to the east dome. All right, so I'm gonna start out by putting a hole here through our shed. Gonna put a hole in here so I can run the conduit through. Once I get through this, I should be able to start hooking things up. It might be a little noisy in here with all the, with the inverters and a fan going but uh, bear with me. For 
Reaching the end of the line here, this is about the last full piece before we get to the dome. Now I just need to add one more length of pipe and I'll connect it to the uh, box over here. But before I do that, I'm gonna shut this down to get this last length of pipe from the conduit into the box here. All right, all attached, looking good. Now I'm gonna put this elbow on and I might kind of have to dig out this back area a little bit so it sits a little flatter. I probably could have cut this pipe a little shorter, but uh, as close as I can get this to the house, the better, from, in my opinion. So this pipe has been in this wall for a long time. I'm just gonna cut this off and then I'll put some uh, one inch pipe right through here. We're getting down to the home stretch. All connected to the house, y'all, it's looking good. All right, we got it. So I've actually already tried kind of working with the fish tape a little bit and I put it through the other side of the conduit, tried running it over here, but I think I got hung up on all those 90s I put in. I'm no expert, so all the experts out there don't laugh. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna pop out. It's gonna pop out. It popped out. I got it! <laughs> Inspector Crusoe is making sure the job is done right. All right, so Jess is gonna be helping out. She's gonna create the hook that we're gonna use to uh, attach to the fish tape and pull it through the conduit. Sure. Now he's laying down on the job. You can hear me, right? I can hear you. Ready? Well, just got back a little while ago from getting more supplies. Got everything torn out of the ground. I'm uh, just crazy upset with myself. You know, I thought I had done my research. I thought I had done my due diligence. I was feeling confident that this would work. Maybe I just tried stuffing way too much into that one inch pipe. So I don't really have a whole lot of time to feel sorry for myself. Maybe I can feel sorry for myself later. But uh, I gotta get back to it and I gotta get this one and a quarter inch run. And um, that for sure will be good enough to uh, make this run. Should fit almost twice the amount of wire I was stuffing into it before. Well, the journey to fixing a mistake begins with putting in the first pipe. At least I think that's how it goes. Yeah, here we go. Let's do this all over again, shall we? So maybe since I've done this all already, it'll go a lot quicker. Hey y'all, good morning. Actually, I got most of this line run last night, but I am out here so early in the morning that I have no light. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to, I already got the power switched off here. I'm just trying to knock out more of this knockout so I can get a larger box adapter in here and put this last piece of pipe in. It's creepy being out here at this time. I got the fish tape through again, but I don't want to get too excited this time because obviously we had issues the last time. Now as soon as Jess gets up, we'll attach it and then try and push this through. Wish us luck y'all. We are going to need it. So while Jess is firmly attaching the wire to the fish tape, I assemble the little reel stand for the wire, and hopefully that'll make things a little easier to get the wire off the reels. Okay, ready? Pulling.
We are making some really good progress. I think we got about 10 feet to go before we hit those 90s. Oh man, it is a workout. I had to switch to another pair of gloves and this thicker pair of gloves, I think it has better grip and that's helped out tremendously. Like I said, I think we got 10 feet to hit those 90s and not, not a whole lot more to go then after that. How's this been for you? Well, it's a lot easier than it was yesterday. How's it working out here for you? You got a system down? Yes. Setting these spools up like that really helps a lot. Does it? Yeah. All right, you ready to hit this? Not too much more to go. Let's do it. All right, uh, I'm ready whenever you are. So like I said, with these gloves, it's been a lot easier. I got better, much better grip and it's going a lot smoother. But it's still pretty tough. Like I said, we should be able to fit almost twice as many wires as we got going through there, but still ain't easy. I also got a step stool in here because I'm a little guy and it just gives me better leverage getting a little up higher. I'm just a little guy. <laughs> and I've stepped up on the platform to give me even more leverage. Come on! I got it! Jess, you know, we did this before the big storm. We did it. So we just got this last little bit of wire. What I'm gonna do is uh, unspool it. So we'll just unspool the rest of this wire and we'll push it through into the dome. Jess is gonna tidy up the wires here on the inside. We still can't do anything with these wires yet. We can't hook them up. But in the meantime, I am going to be backfilling the trench. Now that the trench is all sealed up, last thing to do is get this all sealed up. We beat the range, y'all. That's crazy. It's cutting it close, but we did it. I think we're excited that we, we did it, and we're just that much closer to powering up this house. So I think today is the day I'm gonna get electricity from the shed over to our house. I gotta install these breakers I just got. I gotta fix up the boxes and get that ready to go. I might even install some uh, lights. Uh, I think this will be a perfect time to do it. Kind of a nice rainy day. Jess is out with crew running some errands. She'll probably take them for a walk. So I got some time here alone. Well, not all, quite alone. UV's over there. Hey, UV! She's just hanging out with me. UV. Is it Daddy Daughter Day? Is it Daddy Daughter Day? Just you and Daddy hanging out. Just you and Daddy hanging out today. That'll be a perfect time. We won't need as much energy, so I'll shut the power off, get those breakers installed, and we should be good to go. Let's do it. All right, y'all, so we're back in the shed. And I'm gonna do my wiring over here. It's very exciting. This is what I wanted to show you. I got my 50 amp breakers. Eaton 50 amp breakers. These have been so difficult to come across. I couldn't find them in any stores nearby. I actually had to go online and I actually found these from Menards. So I had to order them. I had to wait for them to get here, but they are finally here. A store from Wisconsin that I used to frequent. Well, they came through for me all the way here in Arizona. So uh, big thanks to them. Finally got my 50 amp breakers, so these should fit nicely into uh, this panel right here. I'm gonna get these installed and then do some finagling in the box in the house and we should be ready to go. Those slid in real nice. Well, <laughs> it may look more complicated, but like when I got it in position, they slid in pretty nice. This isn't exactly the way it should be done, but these will be hot wires and they're black. These will end up being hot wires, even though they're green. Uh, I made a mistake. I'm gonna own up to it. The color is definitely gonna be off, but I will mark these with, uh, in fact, I should get that right away. I'll mark these with red tape to signify them being hot. And this is the ground wire, and of course the neutrals will be all set. A mistake was made, and I had too many green wires. But I'm not going to not use those green wires. Yeah, then, you, then you had to work with what you had. 
Obviously, you should not use green wires as hot wires. That's why I marked them with red tape. Again, not perfect, but I'm, you know, I'm not those hundreds of dollars worth of wire and I'm not tossing it. <laughs> the only one that should be messing in the electrical box is me. Uh, so, and Jess knows, she, although she yeah. probably would not mess with the electrical box. So I think we're good. Yeah. And as long as it's clearly marked what it is. Exactly. All right. So I'll put in these uh, last two hot wires here. And I should be able to turn the power on, back on. So I got the tape on there, so they should be ready to go. Last, but certainly not least. And uh, some people were wondering like why I had so many conductors going through uh, the pipe, you know, why so many wires going through there. And that is because one set of those wires is gonna be powering up this dome while the other set of wires will end up powering the other dome. Yeah, don't forget, we have a whole nother dome that we're building <laughs> after this. So that's just kind of uh, forward thinking on my part. I didn't really want to have to run another trench when that time comes, I'll just be able to run wiring from here over to there, and then we should be good. It still looks a little bit like a rat's nest. I was hoping to avoid this looking too crowded. I wanted to leave extra wiring in place just in case. I think a professional probably would have this box looking a lot cleaner, but I think it looks okay for a beginner. So I got all my neutrals in place. I got the ground in place. I got all the hots in place, and we should be ready. Okay, so I think I'm ready to turn the power back on. But I'm gonna leave these two breakers off right now. I don't need electricity going to the dome just yet. All right, y'all, now that I got that other box straight, now it's time to get uh, this one all straightened up. I'll put all these breakers in, get all these wires attached. Maybe we'll actually get some power in here soon. Get all my 20 amp breakers in here. Perfect. So the breakers are installed. This particular box didn't come with a grounding bar. That's okay, I got one right here. So I'm gonna install it right up on this side. All right, got the grounding bar installed. Well on the way. Another thing I'm gonna add here is another neutral lug. I'm gonna have two in here. All right, I'm gonna start attaching some of these wires. Let's start with the easy one, with the ground. I got a lot of excess here, so I don't need nearly this much. One thing I did want to address is I was just surprised at how many comments I got about kind of the way I ran the wiring from the shed to the dome. And I just wanted to address that quick. A lot of people, they were shocked that I was pulling the wire through there rather than like pulling it through each 10 foot section and then gluing the pieces up. And although, you know, you can do that, that is a thing you can do. And I have done it. <laughs> uh, technically, you're not supposed to do that. And the reason is if you make a mistake and you accidentally get glue onto the wires, well, that could eat through the, that could eat through the coating and then cause a short. You can be kind of careful and put a little bit of glue on and then try and put the pipe together, but then you might under glue the piping and more moisture can get in there. That is one area where I didn't really want to make a mistake and cut a corner and just make sure the wiring to our house was done right and secure and then I never have to worry about it again. All right, so I'm back at it this morning. Let's get this wiring done. Okay, I got my ground hooked up, got my neutral, got the hots. Now, start plugging these into these breakers. Maybe I'll just uh, attach the bedroom wires first, then the outlets, and then the lights. All right, we should be ready for power. But before I start switching anything on, I know I still have some loose wires uh, up by some of these lighting fixtures, so I am going to <laughs> get those situated first, make sure there are caps on, make sure there are no loose ends anywhere, and uh, then I'll uh, then we'll try it out. Very exciting. So it's stuff like this that I want to take care of, make sure uh, I don't have wires <laughs> hanging down when I turn the power on. Just tuck that in until we're ready for our light in here. One done, I'll hit the one in the loft, and then I'll actually, we got the a ceiling fan in, so I'll actually install that on the ground floor level, and then I think we'll be ready to go.
I'm going to install this box up here. Not 100% sure whether I like it there or whether it's going to move, but that's where I'll go for now. So I can house these wires. Uh, I got a visit from uh, Jess and Yuvi. Yuvi! Hey! How's it going? <laughs> she looking to uh, she looking to get up here now. Ah, oh, she's a daddy's girl for sure. Oh, this is exciting, y'all! It's our ceiling fan. Hopefully, this will get some air movement in here and even help keep things a little cooler. It's gonna be crazy exciting when just sees with all that's going on in here. There's another project with the electrical that's kind of just taken a while. A lot of these things are new to me but not completely new. I mean, I have some experience. I mean, I helped set up the uh, solar setup. I got to wire up some receptacles. Before starting this journey on self-sufficiency, yeah, I kind of started doing a little bit of electrical work inside of our home in the city, like installing ceiling fans and stuff like that. So even just little things like that kind of started preparing me for a lot more of these complicated things. You know, it's all starting doing what you can where you're at. But each little project you do, even if it's in the city, helps build that confidence for larger, more complicated projects later on. Pretty soon you're doing some pretty amazing things. It all starts with those simple little projects like installing some ceiling fans in your house. How to do the wiring. Wiring on this is super simple. Connect your ground. Connect the neutrals. For this, I probably could have used maybe the 12 3 wire coming up here, but I decided against it. Just to keep it simpler, keep the cost down a little bit, I'd had to buy a whole roll of the 12 3, and I just didn't know if that extra cost was worth it. All right, and now the black and the blue wires all get attached together. As exciting as really taking shape. Man, I am absolutely beside myself with uh, with excitement here. I just, I'm getting so close to turning on this power and uh, I can't wait. Probably always one of my least favorite parts about installing a ceiling fan is attaching all the blades and arms. But it's gotta get done. All right, let's get the rest of these assembled and attach them. Fan blades assembled. Get the rest of these up. Oh, it is definitely taking a little longer than I anticipated. I was thinking, huh, simple little ceiling fan shouldn't take too long. Bulb installed. All right, what's next? Very exciting. I think I'm nearing the end. All right, y'all, we're all installed. Uh, I think everything is secure. Let's flip some breakers and try this out. All right, y'all, I'm excited and nervous at the same time. I'm ready. Let's power up this dome and uh, see what happens. I'm gonna flip this breaker on. Should be sending power to the dome right now. All right, we're gonna flip this breaker on. Okay, let's do the lighting here. All right, y'all, let's hit the switch. Let's see what happens. Ah, uh, check it out. Ah, we got power. <laughs> we got lights. We got the fan. Oh, <laughs> this is incredible. It's amazing. Oh, this is incredible. We got power in the dome, y'all. <laughs> Let's bring Jess out here. Let's see what she has to say. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Are you ready, Jess? Ready. Go ahead and flip that close switch to you. The closest switch to the door. Oh! <sighs>
<laughs> it's working. <laughs> There's never any doubt, right? <laughs> what do you think, Jess? Power to the dome. I mean, I knew it was going to happen, but it's it's crazy to see it. <laughs> it's been a long time coming, but here it is. Well, that feels good. Too. <laughs> <laughs> it sure does, doesn't it? For me, it feels good in multiple ways. <laughs> It's super exciting, y'all. Oh my God, truly, truly a milestone hit right here. It is beautiful. I'm beside myself. I'm gonna have to bask in this for a little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, it looks magnificent. Uh, man, what a journey this electrical has been. And see, so it's the evening time, uh, sun setting, and get to kind of enjoy the lights here in the dome. Get to enjoy the fan here, mm -hmm. feels really nice. It's fantastic to be able to kind of come out here in the evening or something like that, or you know, when the uh, light's lower and you can still do a bit more work inside here, it is, incredible mm -hmm. but Jess I mean how does it feel how does it feel that power in the dome oh it's amazing I think it really does make it feel more like a home you know the walls aren't finished or anything like that but just being able to walk in here and flip a switch and the lights are on it's like that's a big step it's a little like modern convenience in a dirt home but it, yeah, it's <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing to have outlets that we can use to power batteries or whatever else we need here. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being with us on this journey. It really means a lot to us. Working with the electrical has been a bit like doing magic for me. Yeah, it's crazy messing with these little copper wires and then being able to power your own home. And it's magical, it's magical seeing this place lit up at night and you can see the light coming from inside the dome when you're walking around at night and it's it's incredible. <laughs> like I said, thank you again for being with us on this journey and seeing this magic happen. It really is incredible. All right, y'all. We'll catch you on the next video. You don't want to miss it. Bye.